Hello, friends. It is Wednesday, June 1st, and I am here with a training on the things that you need to know to stand out online. We are going to start by talking about your personal brand and how important that is for you to differentiate yourself in the online space. So I'm not going to waste any time. I don't really have any housekeeping issues. Just so that you do know this episode or this, I should say, video, this training will be aired on the podcast on Friday, June 3rd. So if you're interested in listening to this as you walk the dog, have a cup of coffee, drive in the car, whatever, you can do so on Friday. In the meantime, there will be a blog up on the website, and the blog will have more detail even than what I'm probably going to say today during the training, but the blog post, as well as the show notes when this airs as a podcast episode, will have links to other episodes that I reference and other information in case you are interested in checking all of that out. So... With that being said, I'm going to dive right in because nobody has time to waste, right? (laughs) Okay, so let's start with your personal brand and how your personal brand can help you connect with other people online. Your personal brand, and I know some of you have heard me say this before, but your personal brand is what other people think, say, and feel about you. Now, you have control over that. It's a perception that other people have of you, and you have control over the perception that other people have of you. How can you do that? Well, you start with a personal brand, and then you you create what you want to tell the world. You want to share your story. The reality is each and every one of us have had a unique journey. We've all had experiences We've all had mistakes and failures that we've learned from. We have all had different interactions with different people. We've read different books. Every single step of our journey leads us to where we are or has led us to where we are today. Where we are today is a compilation of all of those experiences and how we can now look at all of those things and share them with other people to help them. Throughout the course of this training, think about the fact that your soulmate client is most likely behind you by maybe six months, maybe three years, maybe five years, maybe 10 years, but they're behind you. They have not yet had all of the experiences that you have had, and they need you to guide them to get to the point where you are today. Now, they may never, ever end up doing what you're doing today, but all of those experiences that you have that have now lended to an expertise for you allow you to serve them and help them become the person that they are meant to be. So your personal brand must be compelling. What does that mean? Well, compelling means to evoke interest, attention, and admiration in a powerfully resistible, irresistible way. So what about your story? What about your journey? Can you tell your audience, those people that follow you online, your fans, your friends, your family, what can you tell them about your journey that is going to be compelling for them? What can you tell them about all of the experiences you've had that led you to where you are today? All those little teeny tiny pieces are going to impact how they see you, how they perceive you, and how they understand how all of your experiences, how your backstory per se, can help them. So let's talk for a second about how you can use your branding, your personal branding, to differentiate yourself. Basically, every single thing that you've experienced becomes part of your messaging now. Obviously, there are going to be things you're not going to share or that you're not comfortable sharing, and that's all fine. That's all well and good. But what you want to do is create that story around your journey to explain to your audience why you're here, who you are, who you serve, how you serve them, and what 
impact, what solution are they, can they expect when they interact with you and when they work with you? What is that reason that they should want to spend time with you? Why should they trust you? What are you going to provide for them? And how are you going to help them achieve whatever it is that they want to achieve, but they don't have the solution for yet? That is all part of you and then part of your branding. So your messaging is going to be on your website and your messaging is going to be on your social media, your email marketing campaigns, your blog post, all of those places. And you're going to interject your experiences. You're going to interject those little things about yourself to explain to people what makes you worthy of them hiring you. Okay. So when we talk about um, an example of differentiating, I'm going to use, let's use a coach. Okay. So say we have a coach who specializes in mindset. So that coach may may look at at life, at at business and think, well, there's a million other coaches that do mindset work. Okay, yes, but how can you differentiate yourself? What experiences have you had on your journey that also add to being a mindset coach that you can now offer your clients that no other mindset coach can offer because they haven't had the exact same journey, the exact same experiences that you've had. So let's say you're a mindset coach, but you're also a strategic thinker, and you've also been in roles in the past where you were working in, say, marketing. So now you have the ability to create marketing strategies. So you're beyond just a mindset coach. You are now a mindset coach with business strategy experience. What part of your journey has allowed you to become more of an expert in both of those things than say the next person who is a mindset coach, but isn't business savvy, isn't an expert in marketing, isn't even an expert in say branding or brand marketing strategy or whatever else you want to add into that. So think about it as that that aspect of differentiating yourself above anybody else in the area that you work in. So when you think about how many coaches there are, how many, and and it's no different than say photographers, there's one on almost every corner if you think about it, but there are ways to differentiate yourself to explain to other people through your branding efforts that you are different, you are unique, and you are the one that is meant to work with them to solve all their problems. And that becomes part of that compelling story that you're going to integrate throughout all of your platforms. Okay, so here's another thing. And some of you may know, but years ago, I did a brand certification course where with Marty Niemeyer, and he's just I guess you would say one of the like branding um, gurus. He's very well known globally and he's written numerous books. One of his books is called Zag. And in the book Zag, his, he talks about if everybody in your space is zigging, you need to zag so that you or vice versa. If everyone in your space is zigging, then you need to zag. So, but think about it as if everybody's zagging, you're going to zig. So if that's the case and there's a business coach who is, or there's a coach who is a mindset coach, but then there's a coach on the flip side of that, who is a business coach and a mindset coach, and you are trying to become an entrepreneur or you are trying to start a business or whatever the case may be, you've been in business for several years, but all of a sudden things are changing and you're not growing and you're stagnant and you need some help. Maybe you need both the mindset piece and the business piece. So who are you going to go to? You're not going to go to the person that is a mindset coach, but doesn't have the business experience or the business acumen to be able to help you with every single thing that you need at this point in time in your business. So if you think about if you are that mindset coach, maybe it's time for you to zag so that you can understand more of the business side of things. Maybe you become a a marketing expert. Maybe you 
look through all of the experiences you've had throughout the course of your life, who you've worked with, how you've helped them, and maybe you can discover how it is that you can zag to attract those clients that you want to work with that are potentially going to someone else. Or if you look at it the opposite, if you're that person who is a business coach and a mindset coach, then you have an additional bonus because there are people out there who need both in order to advance in their business. Okay, so let's um, let's talk about personal branding. And when we when we talk about creating your messaging, it's more than just telling your story. It's integrating all of those components that truly help you stand out amongst everybody else in your space. I don't really like to look at it as competition because I feel like there's enough work to go around for everyone. I mean, we have billions of people in this world. So it's not like, you know, you're the only person that could do this one thing. The reality is there are a lot of people who do the exact same thing. However, they have had different experiences, different learning experiences. Their education has been different. And education doesn't necessarily mean a graduate degree or even a college degree. It's all of those experiences that you have had that have have garnered that education for you to be able to excel in the area you're excelling in. So maybe it is um, certification courses, maybe it is simply interactions with people, maybe it is answering those questions that when people say, can I pick your brain, you are strategically thinking about how you're going to answer that question and where you're going to get the information from to be able to best answer their question. So education does not necessarily mean a college education or a degree. It means all of those life experiences in addition to any type of academic work that you've done. It Maybe you have a marketing degree, maybe you have a psychology degree, but no matter what that is, you've had all these other experiences that become part of that messaging that you want to convey to your audience. So you want to tell them a little bit about that journey throughout the course of the content that you create. So your copy on your website is going to be imperative for this because you want that to be the place that connects you the most, where people can come learn the most about you in one place. That's the home. That's the the platform that your business is going to rest in, rest on. And then everything else is going to be an offshoot from that. You could write a blog post about your story, your journey. You could write a blog post about each individual experience you've had. You can write blog posts about clients you've worked with and what their journey and their the outcomes of working with you were for them. You can post and share all of that on social media. Your testimonials become proof of your experiences and your journey. If you have failed and made mistakes, what were those instances and how did you learn from them? Start to convey these the, the messages or these messages and these components of your journey into your copy, into your social media content, into your blog post, into your email marketing. Because what's going to happen is as people see you as someone that is not perfect, but here to serve based on everything you've learned, all of the information you've garnered over your course of of life and and the journey that you've been on, that's how you're going to build that no love and trust factor. That's how you're going to get people to buy from you. Okay, so let's talk about six ways that you can focus on differentiating yourself from anybody else in your space. And like I said, there are going to be people that do the exact same thing you do or something very, very, very similar, but they're doing it in a different way. You are doing something in a unique way based on all of the life experiences that you've had along your journey. So the first thing that you can differentiate yourself with is the service that you provide or services that you provide. Who are those people that you work with? What is it that you do for them? What is the problem you solve for them? How do you solve that problem for them? What is your why that, you know, what is that root reason that you are doing what you do. This is this is how you're going to connect with the people that need the solution to the problem that you solve. Or yeah, have a problem that you can solve, <laughs> that you have the solution for. So when you think of how you can explain your services, think about 
how you are providing that service that is different, how your ability to provide that service is different than anybody else that is providing that same service or product. What makes you stand out? What differentiates you from everybody else that has that same product or service? So that's services. Customers. This is when we talk about your soulmate clients, right? Where these are the people that you know you can not only solve their problem, you're going to do it in the best possible way because they are just behind you in this journey of life or business, whatever the case may be. These are the people that you're meant to serve, that you know that working with them is also going to fill, fulfill you and serve your purpose while you're helping them and serving them to provide a solution. If you're struggling to define who your ideal audience is, think about those people, think about who you were three years ago, because most likely that's who you're looking to serve. Think about those people that ask you to pick if they can pick your brain. Those are people that they're admiring you. They know that you can provide a solution for them and they trust you to provide that solution. Those are also your people that when you provide an answer for them, you are going to become front of mind and they're going to refer you. You can also look at people you've collaborated with in the past and you can look at their ideal audience to see, okay, what about their audience is the same as who I want to work for. But really look at the, the broad picture first of who those people are you want to serve and then fine tune it because maybe there's demographics involved, maybe there's financials involved, maybe there are gender like male versus female, maybe there's moms versus empty nesters. It could be any a plethora of different things that are really going to truly help you identify your ideal person, your soulmate client, but start with that broad brush stroke of, okay, this is who I was. These are my experiences. Who are those people that need my experience to solve the problem for them? And how can I connect with them? And how have I in the past connected with them, maybe unknowingly or just in interactions, I've solved a problem. So I know that they're my ideal person because they asked the question, and they were interested in what I was giving them in response to their question. That is your ideal or soulmate client or customer is that person. Now, if you go back, I know I, I don't know if I've done a training. I know I did a podcast episode a long time ago, but it's been a long, long time ago on the five W's of personal branding. And those are the who, what, where, when, why of your personal brand. So as you're thinking about your services, as you're thinking about who your ideal customer is, think about those five W's. And I can put the link to, those will be in the blog post. That link will be in the blog post to that blog, to that specific blog on the five W's of personal branding. And you can also link to that will also provide a link to a previous podcast episode if you're interested in learning in that format. The five W's, who, what, why, when, and where also go along with our third differentiating factor, which is location. So do you only work in your geographical area locally, or do you work globally? How do you serve your audience? Do you serve them virtually? Is your location all online? Or do you have a brick and mortar? Do you um, serve your clients internationally, or do you only serve your clients domestically? How do you work or where do you work with your clients? What is that location? Another factor to consider with that location factor is competition. Now, like I said before, I'm not a big fan of the word competition, but the reality is there are other people that do what you do. So how do you make yourself stand out? So if, if you have a, a brick and mortar and somebody across the street does something similar to you, how are you going to differentiate yourself? How are you going to help yourself stand out? So maybe you become a hybrid model. Maybe you do online work and in-person work. Or maybe your brick and mortar is just a place where you go to have quiet time and focus, and that's where you do your work, but you actually work with everybody else. 
online. Differentiate yourself by explaining that to your customers, to explain, explain that to your audience on your website and your social media content. This is great for content for behind the scenes work if you have a physical location. If you don't, let people see. Where do you work? Do you work in your closet? Do you work in an office? Where do you, you know, do you work it out of your kitchen? The, these are things that make you real, make you authentic, and let people connect with how you're doing things so that they can have hope that they can do these things too. So that's where location comes into play. Speed and ease of working with you. This goes all the way from onboarding your clients to offboarding your clients. So speed and ease. How easy is it for you to or how easy is it for other people, your soulmate clients, to get on your schedule for a discovery call? How fast can they get on your calendar? Do they need to be on a wait list in order to get that opportunity for a discovery call or to work with you because you are so booked out with so many clients? What is the speed and ease of working with you? Part of that comes around to the onboarding process. Are things automated? If you have a discovery call, how long is it gonna take for you to then send the contract to the person that wants to work with you? What limitations are there for that person to sign the contract and pay you the deposit or in full? So think about all of the steps that it takes to go from meeting you on social media, learning to trust you, getting to know you, building that relationship, to onboarding, and then how easy is it for them to work with you? If your schedule is so jam packed that you don't have, you can't put them in your books once a week for an hour, how does that look to them? And how can they, how can you make this as easy as possible? Maybe it is automating your calendar and having your, having them have access to your calendar to book you at a convenient time. Maybe it is structuring it so that you meet with them once a week at a certain time, the same time, every single week. So it's these little things that, these little details that really help people understand how easy it is to work with you and how fast they can work with you. In addition to speed, think about the longevity of your contracts. Are you working with clients? Is it, is it just a one-time meeting? Is it a full-day VIP experience? Is it a six month program, a full year program. What does it look like? What is the speed and ease of you serving your clients? Help them understand that upfront. Doing all of these things also helps with handling objections. So when you do have discovery calls, then you are already prepared because you have all of these systems, processes, and tools in place so that you're not having to struggle to explain everything to them on a discovery call. So think about making it not only easy for your customer, but making it easy for you because the more automated and the more processes you have in place, the easier your life is going to be to do an onboarding or to do an offboarding after you've worked with the person. Okay. Our fourth thing is pricing and, or wait, is that the fifth thing? Yeah, that's the fifth thing I think is pricing. So you have multiple ways that you can price your service or your product, right? But here's the thing. You can go to a higher price and be seen as maybe the highest price in your industry, which most likely is going to be indicative to quality. And it's also going to help define who your, your soulmate client is, right? Because if you are super high ticket, then you're going to eliminate a lot of people that can't work with you. And there is nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But if you are in that higher price area, you have to be sure that you are providing that level of quality that equals that price, that the value is there so that anybody that works with you is going to interpret the value being worth the price so that when they talk about you to other people, you're able to control that perception of your person, you know, of your business, of your personal brand, because they are telling you, telling other people that, you know what, it was expensive, but it was worth every dime because the value was immense. If you are a lower ticket person or business and your price for your product or service is lower, that is fine too. If your price is lower, you are going to attract a different audience. However, 
no matter what the audience is, no matter what the price point is, you have to provide that same quality or people are going to say, oh yeah, it was cheap, but I didn't really get anything out of it. Nobody wants that for their business because you just lost all of your referral sources and opportunities to collaborate in the future. So you wanna make sure that even if you are a lower price point, you're still providing the quality and the value that's expected. I like to think of this as your brand prestige. So when you're thinking about quality and you're thinking about price, the quality and value has to be there. You can't give a lower price and then think, oh, well, I can just do this because it's a lower price. So it doesn't really matter because it really does matter. If you have someone, so when you think of your brand prestige, think about um, like, are you a Walmart brand? Okay, the price is gonna be lower, but so is the quality. Are you a, say Saks Fifth Avenue or Gucci, then you are going to be expensive, but the quality is going to be there. If something is off on either end of those things, because people who buy from Walmart still expect quality, they don't buy, let's say a pair of shoes and expect the shoes to last one use, right? They want there to still be quality to get them through a year, two years, whatever, with that pair of shoes. And Walmart, I, well, I mean, I don't, I, I'm making an assumption here that if you're buying some, something from Walmart, Walmart cares about the quality that they're providing to their, to their customers. They're not having, maybe it's the least expensive, but it's not necessarily the least in quality. So you wanna make sure that no matter what price point you are marketing at or selling at, you want to make sure that you're providing the value and quality at the same time. And you have to communicate that to your audience that, okay, this program may be less expensive than the person across the street or the other coach that's online, but here is why my price is lower. And then here, or here is why my price is higher, but no matter what the value, the quality is there. And then last, um, Oh, quality is the last thing. That's the, the sixth thing that we're going to talk about. And that's quality. So again, this reverts back to your brand prestige and the quality that you're going to provide. So if you are working with clients that, you know, maybe you're a coach and you, somebody pays you 10 K, then you better provide 10 K worth of value. If you are a coach and you have clients that their goal is to achieve 2K months, then that's incredible, but you better make sure that you're providing the value to help them achieve that goal. It, it's no different. It just depends on where you are in the market and the quality that people are expecting from you and the quality that you are going to provide. And that has to be consistent because if you disappoint, then you lose opportunity. So how do you differentiate your price point and your quality? Because the two pretty much go hand in hand, but how do you differentiate that? And it's not necessarily justify, but it really is defining that and explaining that to your audience so they understand what they're gonna get and why the price point is what it, what it is. Okay, so if you are in a niche that is very popular, you have an opportunity to disrupt that niche. And you can disrupt that niche by the results that you provide for your audience. So what are the results that you provide? Share the testimonials that you have. If you have not been asking your customers for testimonials or reviews, it is time to start. It is so simple. And most people, if you have satisfied them and provided high quality and value for them, they will be happy to write a review for you. But this is how you're going to disrupt your industry or your niche. You are going to show everyone that this is the result that you're providing for people. These are the thoughts that people have and how incredible they think you are. You want to share those testimonies everywhere, your website, social media, email marketing, Pinterest, you want to share those testimonials so that people can truly understand how incredible you are and that you are worth investing in. Whether you're a high ticket, low ticket, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you're providing the results and the quality. And the way you provide that service can be something completely new, completely different. You know, when you think about disrupting your niche, maybe you are that mindset coach, but as that mindset coach, you are, you have created a new model. 
you are transforming the way people think by using the model that you've created. So now you've disrupted what has been traditionally done by mindset coaches and you're changing the playing field because you've now you've now stepped up the game. You have now hit so many home runs with your clients and your clients are giving you the testimonials to prove that that you are completely disrupting your industry because you have everybody else scurrying around to think, oh my gosh, they just created this model. How can I adapt to now still get the clients that I'm meant to be working with? Chances are their clients, maybe, you know, if you're this person that has established this incredible model and you've changed all these things, maybe you're the person that now is seen as the top notch. Your brand prestige just went up tenfold. But the other person is still where they were, and that is fine because they can still keep working with their people, but your people are going to see that, okay, she's outstanding, and more and more people are going to come to you because they see now how incredible you are and how you can serve them. So that is the end of this training for today, and I hope you guys found this useful. I gave you a lot of information on how you can differentiate yourself online so that you can stand out online as the expert that you truly are. We are going to have this episode up on the podcast on Friday, June 3rd, and then we'll have this episode or the blog post up on the website today. So after the training, if you want to access any links, access the the link to the book um, Zag by Marty Niemeyer, if you want to download my free ebook for um, the purpose to results method, which talks about the six things that you need as you start try to build that strong foundation for long-term brand and business success. That is also available and the link will be in the blog post as well as in the show notes for the podcast when it airs on Friday. I encourage everybody to go to those show notes or to the blog post just because there's a plethora of information there. More details on differentiation. This was just a quick and dirty summary, but there is so much more information there that I know you guys will find it so helpful. So I encourage you to go and do that as well as check out the links. If you are curious about how I work with my customers, my coaching clients to help them differentiate their, their personal brand and their business online. I would love to get on a call with you. I have a free discovery call that I offer to anyone who is interested. We break down your business very quickly. You tell me a little bit about you. I tell you how I work with my clients and we actually take a, a look at your business and give you some strategic uh, tips, pointers. So if you're interested in that, the link for that is in the blog post or the show notes as well. Or you can simply send me an email at robin at the robin and I'll send you the direct link. I'd love to connect. Have a fabulous day and I will see you next week for another training.